that just me just playing through the changes. And I'm realizing, man, I'm rushing like crazy just because I, I haven't played that chart in a long time. That was so Daryl will get mad at me. He's like, Daryl, Dave, stop rushing. No, Daryl was <laughs> telling me, like, usually jazz bands will, because, you you know, in that performance, in, in the 1990 performance, you guys played pretty fast. And yeah. usually that happens, you know, when you're... You get excited. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so can, you, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, because this, this student... You wrote 176 as the tempo marking, I think, and and but you guys played it, you know, at I don't know, like two two hundred or even faster. And no, I bet. At, yeah, yeah. At those up tempo, um, at those faster tempos, can you show us how you would work on a like a sixteenth note lick? Because I, um, just for me as a as a student of jazz, I I find it hard to, unless I'm just like you know worked through something and just yeah. like plug it in it's hard for me to memorize in uh, sorry improvise in in 16th notes yeah so when you're actually calling 16th but i'm going to call it swing eighths because like um jazz musicians they tend even when they're playing 16th they're just it's really double time ah uh, okay okay so like what happens is like like traditionally tunisian would be you heard the original so eighth notes, right. that's eighth notes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what happens to do with double time, which you call sixteenths, is really one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that's called double time. But what's going on? The tempo's at the eighth notes thing. But you're playing, you're thinking twice as fast because you've played tunes that fast. And that's the bebop tradition that they, uh, Charlie Parker was so much known for, was that they would have these jam sessions in New York in the, in the 40s, where the way they would keep people from playing and kicking them off the bandstand was to count off the tunes so fast that nobody could play. Only the couple, few of them could even handle it. And so it became the way you had to know how to, to uh, play. So it's, it's about learning how to double time. So, so the way you learn how to double time, you, you, you have to kind of first know how to play swing a slow, right? And then, um, and then uh, um, play, you know, the best way to do it is just to hang out and jam all the time. You know, the way we would learn a lot of times was every day just getting what we call, call a fake book called the real book back then, which is, you know, we would just play and we just do even know what these tunes were and we would just play and the cool thing about, I'll tell you one thing about double time that Daryl and Matt and I both kind of came up with, three of us, was is that the bluegrass tradition is really good for that because bluegrass is, has a lot of fast tempo type stuff and they use these bowings that involve, which Daryl teaches, I'm sure, shuffle bow bowings like Georgia Shuffle or, uh, and, and, then, um, and then you can use that to create a more legato version of jazz versus the Europeans will play more single notes or, or, or what's called slurring across the beat, um, which is just slurring from the offbeat eighth into the, but da, 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 this kind of thing. And I'm sure Daryl's probably, you know, you're going to run into that with that, with Daryl. I'm not sure what he, so, so, um, so the, um, so that kind of really helps. So, um, so like a, a Boeing, like the Georgia shuffle is like, you know, gives you the beat on two and four. One, two, three, four. Now, so what you can kind of do with jazz is more like, jazz tends to be more slurred across the beat. So what you can do with double time with that bluegrass thing is you just slam a down bow and slur on the up because the, the Georgia shuffle is like So you're doing a down bow and up bow stuff. So you keep that same principle and you just kind of like do a thing where you throw a down bow with up bow slurs 
You see, it kind of like you can just, it's not, it's not. I mean, I can kind of do that, but it sounds so square, right? Can you hear how square? Can you, can you now, do the, the slurry one slowly? I can't. You know, can I tell you one story about Daryl and me? Because we would be playing, We first we were playing, mostly there was one violist named Lori Moore, but she left pretty early on. It was Irene was the one we recorded with. So she was the, so Irene was, Irene, Irene Sazer and Mark Summer were the, were the ones we really were working on a lot of these things in for real. And um, so they're from the classical tradition and they would get so frustrated with me and Daryl because we're playing in the string quartet and they'd say, you have to do the bowing. And neither one of us could do it because it would keep chain, you know, when we play jazz, the you, your bowing comes from the, um, so if I play slow, I won't play the way I play fast and I don't really know how, right? Yeah. I just go back to my old s s normal swing. I don't know how that happens. I can't quite explain how that happens, but it, it turns into something that feels very natural. And I think it's from playing a little bit of bluegrass back then, but and then applying it right away to playing jazz. Um, you know, the, uh, Alex is really great at teaching this too. He's he's come up with ways of playing more long slurs and have it be have this kind of jazz bebop thing. And yeah, um, actually, um, Daryl took a, a sabbatical a couple a, a couple years ago, and and Alex was the substitute teacher during that time. Yeah, so, so so I got I, I got to take some. Sorry, there's a train going by. I, I got to take some lessons from Alex. And yeah, he's that, yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. And he, he that's a good example of the younger players taking even further. You know, um, so so like, like you know, um, so there, but basically, it's still these two these two types of bowings: the the the, the Georgia shuffle and the slurry across the beat. Of course, you don't do that all the time. You do supper bows. You know, it, it kind of happens in a more uh, organic way. Um, and, and one way that you learn this is by transcribing solos too, for sure. Like, and the other thing is, is that we, you know, and Daryl will always tell it. It's like you, you want to play, you want to listen to non-fiddle players. Listen to like horn players, piano players. You know, and that's the way to avoid sounding like too much like somebody else, you know, and to get the real sound in your ear. Because the violin players in jazz are really more, uh, we weren't progenitors of the style. In the we Maybe early on the violin was, you know, they say, but pretty much from the late 30s, 40s on, it's been all horns. And, you know, you know this. So, you know, if you're listening, to, yeah, Capelli's great, but if you really want to play jazz for real and your own sound you're gonna want to get out and listen to the, any violin player except for me always listen to me no, just, just <laughs> i will i will <laughs> no i, I know we go here <laughs> <laughs> i noticed early on when i listened to daryl I, I would like actually hear the saxophone sound oh, like yeah. it, it sounded like a saxophone that, that, that was one of the yeah. first things i noticed about his playing yeah me too yeah. he's like a great he's such a phraser you know like he's He's great about creating an emotional quality too. Like he, he's got a kind of a, uh, a song. Uh, uh, he talks about, you know, he would tell me about a vowel. He likes the vowel sound uh, versus the consonant of the start, note starting, you know. Uh, he's doing all. You sound like Daryl. Of course, I came up with him. He was like, you know, <laughs> totally, I'm guilty. <laughs> that, Can you I mean, like, I... yeah, Sorry. go ahead. I'm just saying, for me, what my role in all of this is, is composing and taking a string quartet and bringing the compositional model to the string quartet, drawing from what Daryl started, and, and, and Daryl was part of, of course, he was part of the group in the beginning, and, and then keeping, coming from that angle of, of, the, uh, of that part of the, of the tradition of the string quartet. Because if you listen to string quartet, 
Yeah, you got great string quartets, but you're playing the greatest music of the European tradition, of the greatest composers, writing their masterpieces. And so who cares if you, yeah, it's great if you can play, play a tune and blow and play jazz in a string quartet. You, if you want to really get into the tradition, the composing part is just as important to deliver on. And so that's still, I fight that. That's my, that's my passionate feeling about uh, being in a string quartet, that, that if it is going to have weight, the role, and, it's, and that's where I'm coming from with it, right? So anyway, I interrupted you were going to ask something else about. I'm I, I sorry should, about we that. should um, talk about the your 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 com com compositions, but I was just going to ask about the chop. Like you, I, um, yeah. you were chopping a little bit. Can you? I don't know. Like, can you talk a little bit or show a little bit more about it, or what you know for a classical player, how one might yeah. start in on it? And this is so Daryl. I mean, I feel like I should, you know. Daryl would do. This is what he does so well. He teaches. Well, no, this. but He's you're the, you're an amazing chopper too. I know. Well, I'm I'm I kind of have my own. You know, like all of us. You know, I, I have my own way of being me through it. Um, um, so, um, but no, you, you know, it's like I mean, it's a whole way of of taking the bow, and I'm sure Daryl talks about. You hold the bow differently. You you push it away from the instead of of uh, having it tilted this way, you push it away, and then. Um, I like the, the thumb being straight, kind of pointed a little bit towards the tip, and then you just kind of like you just slap into the strings and hold it, right? And then that's the downstroke, and then the upstroke is just to click it on the up, you know. And then you can get tone on the upstroke. Okay, so you know the other thing is you can play like a, a and then you, then you want to sort of get an eighth note, and then get one, two, three. So the first thing is get used to this because everybody's like going, how do I get that sound? And part of it is that just, you know, if you throw it down in the strings and just hold it, it's actually a very delicate technique. It's not really, it looks like you're destroying the instrument to people like, oh, what is he's going to break his violin? But it's actually very delicate. You know, there's not a lot of, it's, it's just like any violin bow technique. It's got to be approached from the same. It takes practice. I will tell you. I consider myself the second guy besides Daryl. I, I live with Daryl and I, I, I learned that I just got dig, dug into that shop and it took me two months to figure it out. And it wasn't like Daryl showed me. He was not he was young and he wasn't like that. You know, you just would hang out, right? And so I just kind of watched him and figured it out. And then I'm pretty sure I would be, you could ask him this, but I'm pretty sure I'm the second guy who learned how to do the Daryl Anger chop. I would be the second guy in line and, and so, now, having said that, there's got Casey Dreesen. I mean, there's these players, and and Gabe and Turtle Island is he, he's. I mean, everybody. You know, there's so many great Alex, and there's just so many people who are so good at it now. It's just become uh, a part of uh, the young. They all own it now. But um, so um, I would say the one thing I'd say is that I think gets missed a lot of times. I think Daryl's really intuitively does so well. Is it's not necessarily meant to show off. Like it's 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 a very cool technique, and then people go, "Wow, you know, hey, that's amazing, right?" And it is really striking, but it's meant to it's functional. It's meant like if you're going to be a great drummer, you can't be going. Bah, 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 bah. You got to be laying the groove so the player sounds good. So the player you're playing under sounds good. It's not about you. It's about the guy who's playing over you and the bass player who's playing with you. Like so that it's got to be it's it's. You got to get it so you can do it quiet. And that's why, to me, it's like that's what gets missed a lot of times is that, that it's just, just a great drummer. Great drummers are not always in your face. They're just playing the, the most perfect groove that they disappear on you. You know, and this is the same thing with the chop. Just that's my one thing, that because uh, people are so attracted to to the the showiness of it, that it's it's great as a tool. It's purpose. Remember, it's purpose. It's just like playing in tune. You know, it's like it, it's about it's about the function of the music. Okay, I said enough. <laughs> no, no, no. This is all exactly what I, what you know, want. Oh, but other than that, I've kind of left the. I mean, some of these players are, whoa, there's so much more. I can't do this thing called the triple chop where they go, the tra Casey does where he goes, I can't even do it. Something where they go, they do a triple, a triplet. Every, all the young players can do it. 
what is it like, down like in terms of down up what how does it work i don't know like? dude, i don't know if daryl does it it's like, like a I, I didn't know what it is i just seen it and i go okay i'm i'm not gonna worry about that that's 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 for i think it was casey that came up with that for the first time you know i'm still um, trying to figure out what i'm gonna do because i because for a night in tunisia we're gonna um we're gonna do I guess and so in the middle section, right? Um, yeah. Before the cello solo. Yeah. Um, you usually have two solos. Yes, before. right. And so the the function the the function is just comping too. You yes, know, like yes. the, being able to play the chords. You know. A lot of times that's a shuffle bow. The thing about the chop, it's the same as the shuffle. That kind of thing where you're, I'm not going. I'm playing, I'm keeping the bow moving. This is a bridge of the, I'm just playing the, chords of night Tunisia that's the swing part which is just a two beat but when the lap thing it's not you can do that doing as you can do it as it comes but there's a way that you don't feel the the uh, the um, the uh, grid which is what jazz guys do. so the, 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 for that you want the bow moving in eighth notes the same of the chop. So those two roles. So the, the each player who's not improvising, you got a bass player who's playing the bass lines, the poor bass players. The cellist works really hard and they always want to get paid early because they have to work so hard. I'm just teasing. So the, the, but the other instruments have to take these roles. So if you, if somebody's taking a solo, then the, the, the one of the, uh, either the viol, the violas, so the, so they got two violins, viola. So let's say I'm, I'm, let's say you're taking the solo on the violinist. I'm at the look what the violist is doing. Is he going to chop? You can work it out later. One, one person's playing the chop, maybe without any notes. And the other person's playing the chord. And that for the, for the for the harmony, you want to know about what's called leading tones, where you know you need to know how the chord voicings, and that's where you kind of need to you need to know p piano was very helpful how to play how to how to voice or a guitar. So um, you almost see uh, so many jazz musicians play a, a rhythm section instrument. So Daryl plays mandolin, um, and 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 I and I play some piano just enough to be able not to play well, but I can. I can think on the piano so that you can come up with how to play those voicings in two note phrases. So that if it's an E minor seven flat, you know, if it's a, a E flat seven sh uh, sharp 11 going to D minor six, nine, like that tune, you know, you know, I had to figure out which chords am I going to play? I had to kind of figure out what, how to stay away from the root how to give the, the notes that give the flavor of the chord progression um, and keep the groove in the way that I play, like that right. the, I mean, like the, 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 the kind of thing. And that's all improvised. Yeah. So that's a whole other improvising skill that has nothing to do with playing a solo. Right. Well, and that's yeah, challenging. Jasmine, that's hard. It takes, it's, it's like, look at, you're a great violinist. You, got, you guys are amazing. So the amount of years and practice you put you have to kind of honor the tradition and know it's going to take something similar to be really great at that. Right. right? right. And just be patient with yourself. Just love it. And yeah. it'll come, you know, and, and, and that's kind of like where when, once you get to be able to do this, it's like you can play, you, you, you get so much more usability as a player when you can play behind somebody. You're yeah. not just the soloist. You're somebody yeah. who can, can, can accompany others. And so that's why this, chop and shuffle bow and bass lines it's just so useful for improvising string players you know yeah. uh, makes yeah. sense yeah
Daryl Daryl talks a lot about you know the thirds and sevens. So I guess yes. you know, for the first chord, that E flat seven, it would be the G and the D flat, right? Correct. And then I guess if you wanted to, and then, but then for the second chord, it's is it do you, would you say it's a D minor six or a D minor seven? Well, it could be the one. You know, oh, D minor six is more what I you know I mean like I said. Yeah. That's pretty. I mean. I might go. So the other thing is, is that you look to the thirds and sevenths are a starting point, and then you want to get into the ninths and the fifth, the thirteens, and the you know. And this is where you got to study jazz language. And, and okay, when do I use a flat thirteen? When do I use a sharp eleven? When do I use a natural line? You know, there, there's, this, there's, and that's. Jasmine, that's well-established jazz pedagogy. You can find that in books and then, you know, uh, you can go down the street and study with your friendly jazz guitarist or pianist and they'll get you just like, you don't need to study with a violinist to get that. You can, the violin thing is just, just these techniques are so useful, this chop, like Daryl's, the, these these techniques that you can draw from. So yeah, so um, yeah, it, it's it's a lot of times just remember you're you were imitating the other instruments when we're doing this it's thirds and sevenths. We're imitating the piano, imitating guitar, right? The the choral instruments of jazz, and so listen to those players and and understand the where, where it's coming from, and you get it. Again, it's really fun, you know. It's fun hanging. If you can look at man, we could go. What we were really proud of in Turtle Island is you could just open up a, a, a tune in the real book with just chords slashes and the melody and the, you know or, and we could play it we didn't need to have a we could play for 10 minutes without needing to have uh, uh written out parts to play off of you know and that, that's not a lot of string quartets can do that you know right am i right am i right <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly yeah. that's what i'm talking about I, yeah, it is really fun. Even I mean, even to suck at it, <laughs> it's still fun. But it, yeah. it, it, but but still though, I it's it has been kind of frustrating because I, I feel like, you know, I sound so, you know, when I'm just practicing, you know, not not night yeah. and necessarily, but just practicing with my iReal Pro. Yeah, iReal Pro is great. And, yeah, and I'm just like, it just sounds yeah. pretty bad. Just that's sounds pretty bad. I I I still suck. No, you, you know. that's a, that's a, I feel like I do. No, you no, know, and, and that's just that's a. Different. That's different. There's a way that, that that's part of the humbleness of it, like like that that like the sucking part is something where, um, it's a, it's it's just something to wash let wash through you and 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 let it just be let it be there and 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 say so you can be my sit right here sit right here my friendly sucking person. <laughs> And we'll share each other's time and we're going to play this and then we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Right. So, you know, because because that's like uh, it, you can't shut it off. You know, you can't turn it off. And you, 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 you if you pay too much of attention to it, it says it loves it. It's like a black hole. Oh, I love this sucky thing. I, I want to hang out there. Life suck. This is really cool. <laughs> like there's some party that really is attracted to it. Right, so it's like, so I don't, know, you can sit over there on the chair and just sit there while I'm playing through the iReal Pro and I'm having fun here, so knock it off. Or you, you can't say knock it off, you say, come on, you know, you, you can be here, but don't be here, you don't take too much, I'm not really, don't, it's kind of boring to be in that. Yeah, it, it, it you know, you know what I'm saying? Because it's, it never leaves as a musician. I mean, being a classical violinist, that's your whole life to know how it feels to play out of Hit that note wrong on the Tchaikovsky, you know, whatever it is, you know, and 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 it's 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 not something to overcome. It's it's more let it just have its place in things. Does that make sense? Am I making any sense as somebody who sucked my whole life? <laughs> that's got that's through it. very um, <laughs> wise advice. Wise advice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, that's kind of as I get older, I kind of like when you're younger, you can use it to drive. Your, I gotta get better, but at a certain point. Wait, I'm 68 and I'm just getting late in the game. <laughs> so let's we'll get used to this sucky oh, come feeling. On. You know? No, but Daryl is always saying, you know, you you need to start playing with with live live people. That's always what it is. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. You know, I, I I've been asking around here in Chicago, and and it seems like all the jazz jams are pretty intense. I don't want to 
I don't want an intense yeah. jam. I want no, I'm a, for no, amateurs. I totally. yeah. You know, what, what I found a lot of luck with is finding guitar players, you know, like just a guitar player who was a friendly person who who could who can play who wants to learn and hang out and 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 so the thing is um when you find players is, is if, if think about if you take your amp and you're going to join a loud band that's going to be hard so like what i love about daryl's this tradition of turtle island and then it's just, just in general the, the the acoustic string band world you know the the american string band world you're not dealing with the amps and the loud things, that's where it gets to be really hard because you're leaving the good sound of your instrument, you know. So you want to find um, a piano, like I always thought like a guitar player and a cellist who wants to play jazz, that's awesome, who wants to play bass lines or just a bass player and a guitar player too. Um, and then, and then, um, uh, and then who are having fun with it. Um, this is the hardest thing for for us violin players is to find people to play with who wanna who are in the same place who I can learn together with because that's how we were that's why Turtle Island we we're so lucky we had our own little labor, labor laboratory is that the word we were so blessed that like I said we would just every day we just hang out you know you know do the things you did in the eighties that people still do you know. I'll leave them nameless, but you know, the, the fun hanging out and just jamming for hours and hours, you gotta, you, but you know, you just gotta, you, you don't want to, don't assume that they're not, you just gotta put it, it's just like, you know, it's just gotta, it's just being social, you have to get out and, and try and, and um, the pandemic was really hard on people for that, you know, um, I wish I knew the solution to that. There probably is organizations that try to solve that, but you know, I yeah, don't know. I, mean, I don't know. I just, I, yeah, I need someone who's, yeah, like you say, sort of in the same place. Because if they're basically someone who's just starting out, because if yeah, it doesn't have to be starting out. You'd be surprised. You're a great player, so I'll, you know you can play. The, people, jazz guys really appreciate people who play their instrument well. So. Because so many beginner jazz people can't play very well. They're learning to play their instrument as they're learning to improvise and they suck as a player. You can play all over the thing, right? So you, you get a, you get carte blanche. You'd be surprised. You're going to get carte blanche uh, with good players. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll just look, it's just like that. It's just like that. Trust me. Just don't be intimidated by players who think you think they're better than you because they'll like something that you have you're a top-notch player you know and so you should be given access to some of the better players in your area i, I feel know. that I i'm gonna know. say that I don't know. You, you know you, and then you got to be a little brave about it you gotta you gotta be out be on this and try go for it and then yeah make a fool fall on your face keep going they can't tell you're violent they don't know what you're supposed to sound like because you're playing violin so that, <laughs> you know so you can kind of get away with a lot more than you realize what you know? no, i don't think so Absolutely. They, they're used to saxophone play. They're used to, they don't, the jazz <laughs> guys aren't used to violin still to this day. It's like, like you know, so, that's, that's so, um, like, yeah, just, you know, like, that, I think it's really true. That's kind of how I did it, too, you know. Um, still I'm doing it. Like, you mean I still have a career? <laughs> that's great. Yes. It's great. So, I'm teasing you. I'm, I'm, um, uh, uh, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. So definitely, don't be so sure you can't play with that person you hear in town that's really good. Go up to him and any, ask. You know anyone? In I did that with Daryl. I went up to Daryl and asked him, can, "When can I get together with you? I, I you know, I want to hang out, you know." And he said, "Yeah, let's get together." I think I asked him for a lesson. I probably did. We ended up spending nine hours the first day I met him. We just hung out and played all. That can happen, and then sometimes it doesn't. My friend, who's a guitar player, I was playing with. He went up to Tony Rice and asked the same thing, and Tony said, "Uh-uh, <laughs> I ain't playing with you." So he got turned down. You don't. You can hear a no. That's got to be okay. You hear a no, but if you don't ask, you won't know. So, you know, and, and uh, Jasmine is probably the most important thing of all, is to play with other people. If you're gonna, it's such a collaborative style. You learn the. It's like talking. You learn to talk because you're talking to each other, right? It's not like something you can learn on your own and you know through iReal Pro and you can only get so far with it. So, you know, yeah, I wish that for you.
I, I hereby bless you with that. Thank you, so. David! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so, so, so much, too, for, yeah. for your time. It, you yeah, it's really great. Fun. It's a joy. I just feel your heart's really into it. And so, Aww. and I didn't know what I was going to come up against. I thought, oh, what is this going to be like? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, you know, like, like, this is wonderful. I'm so happy. It's your I'm number happy. one fan. <laughs> oh, and send me a link when you play. Oh, my when gosh. You, okay. You, okay. You do it. Do it. We're, okay, we're gonna do it. Okay. Yes, I want to hear you guys play. I, I can't wait. It's great. Okay. I mean, All right. Yeah, because that's my purpose of my life, and Daryl's too, is to do what we're doing. It's, it's got to go out, you know. Otherwise, it's got to get another. And you guys are killing. Oh, come on, it's like yes, you All guys right. are great. And the more you can get that into your playing, the more it's gonna change and widen your group's language structure. And believe me, it's. You need it, you know, like uh, swing quartets. How are we going to stay around? How do we get people to listen to this and love it, right? Yes, they're going to love Mozart, of course, but to keep it alive and how would you not have access to this way of playing American style improvised jet? You know, it's so obvious. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Got to happen. Oh, you got me all excited. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful that we have this amazing, amazing arrangement. Yeah, well, yeah. and I, I'm blessed and stay in touch. I, I, you know, if you want more charts, of course, let me, you know, we can Aww. talk about that and, and see, you know, I, I'm happy to stay. You already got Daryl, so you, you're already covered because you're already with Daryl. I have my own little Dave world that I, I'd love you guys to try. Of course, any of my original music would be great. But just, you know, in general, I want to be part of supporting you guys and what you're Aww. doing. Because you're obviously into it. Thank and you. you're not just playing it like a shtick to do some kind of thing as a novelty. I can feel your interest and love. Uh -huh. So Oh, yeah. believe me, it's <laughs> it's obvious. It's obvious, Jasmine. It's great. And I didn't know what it was gonna be like. So I see that. Thank you, David. Yeah. You're you're yeah. amazing. Thank you. It's it's yeah. a pleasure. Good to see you. I'll still think of you in, 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 in back east. Some, my, my, my wife's from Sri Lanka, and yeah. I'm from, finally from India, so we go to areas that kind of look behind. It looks a little tropical to me, so I was like, oh, she's, she's in. So it looked very familiar. Anyway, Jasmine, I'll see you. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you, David. Oh, no, you're supposed to say thank you to me. I say you're welcome. That's right. I'm thank you, me. David. <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> All right. Take care. See ya.